We've defined the three playstyles of poke, brawl, and dive, with pokers who bait mistakes, brawlers who wear the other down, and divers who set up the finish. Every style has a strength, but for every strength there is a weakness. Depending on your natural playstyle, certain types of players will present more of a challenge than others. Imagine you're playing a first person shooter video game. The machine gunner will rarely beat a sniper at long range because one player has a scope. And at close range, a sniper will rarely beat a shotgunner because one player doesn't need to aim. This dynamic is less clear in tennis due to A, a disparity in skill, and B, variability. We see upsets and close matches because strategy can overcome a considerable deficit, but players often lose with the correct strategy or win with the wrong one given a large disparity in skill. From a variability standpoint, both right and wrong strategies involve winning and losing points. Every player can trick themselves to think, I need to keep doing what I'm doing, but do it better. And in the heat of an intense battle, watching the ball or in the video game sense, shooting the enemy in front of you will consume all of your attention. So today we're going to relieve you from your duties as a foot soldier and put you in the general's command center. Metaphorically, the weapons your troops are equipped with determine which fights to take and which to avoid. We will explore the triangular relationship, assuming all combatants are a singular playstyle of poke beating brawl, brawl beating dive, and dive beating poke. Here's a synopsis. We don't like each other, so you come at me head on with your fists, which is a brawl strategy. Since you're too strong face to face, I hide behind a tree and start throwing rocks at you, which is a poke strategy. Since you can't punch me when getting hit by rocks, you hide behind another tree and grab rocks as well. Now instead of throwing the rocks at me, you roll the rocks down the slope to my left, and as I get distracted, come around to my right and strangle me, which is a dive strategy. Poke beats Brawl Brawlers just want to be in rhythm and rip the ball to take space. But if pokers are lobbing, slicing, and mixing in other garbage, pretty strokes are just about useless. The brawler is the machine gunner while the poker is the sniper. The machine gun is shooting away while the sniper hides before popping out and picking off the target with precise burst damage. The machine gun has excellent total damage output, but lacks the burst damage to finish in a couple bullets. Think about the British lobsterbacks fighting the American colonists. They are trained to stand in a line and fire round after round out in the open while the guerrilla warfare colonists hide in the trees and shoot at different angles. The poker protects themselves from damage by giving up space. And once the brawler is baited into a vulnerable position, launches a counterattack. In tennis, the brawler cannot hit the ball through the court when the poker is far behind the baseline. The poker is glad to see the brawler waste their energy, generating pace, with no reward for the risk. Pushing into the poker space allows the poker to rip the ball right at their feet or redirect with the brawler slow to recover from taking a big swing. Dive beats poke. Pokers want to give up space and absorb the attack before pushing back even harder. But if the diver attacks before the defense is set or surprises an unsuspecting poker, counterpunch is useless. 
The diver is the shotgunner that can sneak up and knock out enemies in a burst. But unlike the brawler, never shoots prematurely to alert the enemy defenses. The diver carefully stays out of enemy sight lines and repositions to fight on favorable terms. The sniper's predictable defensive position makes them a sitting duck reacting to the diver's offense. Instead of lining up foolishly, suppose the British patiently devised an organized plan to push the colonists out of hiding and then unload all their firepower at once. In that case, there'd be a lot more strawberries and cream west of the Atlantic. Now in tennis, the poker who waits forever is at the mercy of a diver's execution to finish. Unlike the brawler, who is taking big cuts at the ball every single time, is very predictable and easy to counterpunch. While the diver keeps their balance and doesn't overhit until they get the right moment, the right opportunity to move forward. Once they are inside the court, there are too many options with too little time to respond. Brawl Beats Dive Divers like to set up inside the court, where a variety of finishing shots keep their opponent guessing. But if the brawler pushes the diver behind the baseline, the finish becomes both predictable and riskier. Unlike the sniper, who sits back defensively, the machine gun brawler is actively taking space in the open and pushing the enemy back with constant firepower. The shotgun diver cannot punish enemies in the open due to a lack of range, allowing the machine gun to fire uncontested. Therefore, the shotgunner will often take chip damage from a barrage of stray bullets flying their way when closing space to get in position. Having compromised health points, aka being worn down before diving, makes winning that fight a much lower percentage. See, if the British got lined up with their pikemen in a row and the colonists rushed in on their cavalry, that would have been suicidal. In tennis, the diver can accept a slow defeat getting worn down to the relentless firepower of a, of a brawler or a kamikaze trying to drop shot or hit a lucky winner from behind the baseline, assuming the brawler establishes their strength to hold space with powerful rhythmic strokes and movement. Even if the diver wins some of the long grinding points, long term, they're losing their ability to attack and finish in bursts. These back and forth dynamics have commonly been referred to as a chess match, and tennis is no exception, with each player countering, then countering the counter. Once the sniper gets a pick, players will stay out of sight lines and key in on that position to dive. Once the shotgunner gets a quick flank, players start checking their angles and grouping up for protection. Once a machine gunner mows down a few enemies, players will start hiding and playing near cover. So congratulations on creating your own counters that will come back to haunt you. But there's always a handful of players, either not very smart or content, who are fine losing without any adjustments. Otherwise, the match will look very different from beginning to middle to end. Some useful questions to ask are, what am I doing compared to my opponent? If I counter my opponent, how long will they realize before they change? Once they adjust, do I have a counter for that? Or if we both have the same playstyle, do I like this matchup or prefer to fight a different way? I'd advise to stick with your strengths to some degree if you don't have the tools to switch, but just being aware of opponents trying to counter 
will help you play so much smarter. In a future topic, we will discuss playing in two counters.